This is just wonderful. Oh yeah, there's lots of newts here. This is great. Just another day at the office for biologist Vance Vredenberg. On this day, the office is a pond in a protected watershed east of San Francisco, where he and Jessica Purificato catch and examine frogs and salamanders. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is just measure what's called snout to vent length. While the animals in this pond appear healthy and plentiful, biologists are shocked by what they're seeing around the world. Disease, pollution, and loss of habitat are killing off these historically tough, resilient creatures. More than 30% uh, of the world's amphibians are in trouble right now. For example, amphibians have been on Earth for over 300 million years. So long before the dinosaurs ever you know, conquered the Earth and then died off, Amphibians were already on land. They were the first vertebrates um, to be crawling and hopping around on, on land. I gotta get his little feet. See his little feet? A swab of this little guy's feet will reveal whether it's infected with a deadly widespread disease called chytrid. Breedenberg has been investigating chytrid with help from a grant from the National Science Foundation. It's a disease caused by fungus. And so the pathogen is a, an aquatic fungus that infects the skin of amphibian. So we're talking somewhere between 200 and maybe 400 species of, of uh, amphibians being driven to extinction by this disease. That's never happened before in recorded history. And this is what we've been finding lately. The size of the frogs are about the size of a small bullfrog, you could say. And here we've got some bones of frogs that have been um, basically eaten by aquatic insects. Another complication? Climate change could be making the fungus worse. There are some people that think that uh, it's climate change itself that's triggering this release um, of, this, of this pathogen from being potentially something that doesn't cause a problem to some, something that's suddenly really, really deadly. These samples are from Little Indian Valley and near the Sierra Nevada is just a little north of Yosemite National Park. Graduate student Natalie Reeder is screening those samples to see if chytrid DNA is present on the frog skin. But the numbers of frogs are dwindling so much in the Sierras that um, on this last trip I went on, I was out for about four days off and on and I only came back with maybe 40 samples. Friedenberg is trying to determine why some populations can recover from the chytrid fungus, while others are wiped out. Is it something about that particular habitat? Is it something about that particular frog itself? Is their immune system a little bit different than the ones that are dying off? Um, or is it possibly a different strain that's less deadly of the fungus? But while searching for those answers, scientists are at the same time doing whatever they can to save these animals. When these animals are dying left and right, you can only, as a, um, you know, as a person who cares about these amphibians, I can only document that for so long. And then at some point I was like, what can we do about it? Here's one thing he did. At the Sierra Nevada Aquatic Research Lab, he set up a sort of amphibian spa Instead of a milk bath, these critters spent several days in a medicinal brew. And I was able to get permission from the National Park Service to go in and actually treat some of these animals with antifungals. Many of those amphibians, microchipped after their treatment in 2006, have been caught again and are disease-free. But with a crisis so widespread, scientists are trying other strategies as well. At the San Diego Zoo, there's a captive breeding program underway with the goal of returning healthy frogs to the wild. It's sort of the Noah's Ark perspective of race out in front of the, the wave of, of death and collect everything you can to try to save them before they go extinct. You got one! Cool! Back in the field, an adult salamander gets a once-over. You can see that he no longer has external gills and his skin is rougher now. Vredenberg works with conservation groups and scientists around the world who are seeing the same catastrophic scenario. We share a lot of traits with, uh, with amphibians. So I think it's really important that we understand um, as best we can um, why these outbreaks of disease are occurring. Because creatures as spectacular as these deserve another 300 million years. For Science Nation, I'm Miles O'Brien.